Hi, welcome everyone to episode 4 of my beautiful, well-produced podcast. Wow, this podcast is brought to you by, uh, Dow Egbert's Coffee, is it Dowie or Dow? Anyway, that's the, the coffee of choice, I'm, uh, trying to save money so I don't get fancy coffee anymore. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, hi, this is, uh, the fourth in, uh, a series of as many as I can bother to do. Um, today's agenda um, is pretty much just going to be general update on stuff. Video games that I played, CSGO changes and news, movies and uh, a new phone. Yay. Um, um, actually, there's uh, another one I need to put down with FK or Parlas. Um, that one's... Okay, so um, uh, I'm just trying to think where I begin. Um, cause I had a, I had a story, um, I'll tell that now actually, because it's relevant as I was just finished doing said thing, which was, uh, my slippers. Um, I got some slippers in the winter cause it's cold. You've got a wooden floor. Slippers are good to, uh, protect my soft tootsies against the, uh, the cold, bitter harshness of the wooden floor. Um, and I was sitting at my desk one day, and when I get ultra relaxed, I sort of like put my knees up, and it's like I could smell cheese, but like proper, proper cheese. I didn't know what it was. Um, like the first thing that I thought was sometime like I I eat my de- at my desk, and like maybe something's fallen off into my chair, and it was like maybe I was eating a block of cheese, and the cheese fell off and got stuck in between my chair, and I've forgotten about it or something, or. I don't know, something's died. Um, but no, it, it turns out it was my slippers and they stunk of just proper cheddar. It was unreal. I didn't even, I've never had this issue before with slippers in my life. And I was just completely bemused by by it. I really was. Like, I, I, I couldn't grasp the situation and what was my cheesy slippers. So I don't know if you put them in a washing machine. So I put them in a bath, bath uh, filled it with hot water. And uh, scrubbed them a bit. I'm gonna leave it f- to soak. Hopefully, it will um, loosen the the cheese or whatever the the cause of stench is, and then they'll be smelling fresh again. Because my God, it was incredibly pungent. You have no idea. Like I could even smell them when my feet were down and quite far away from me. Like when I was just sitting normally, and I was, I c- I can just remember it, just sort of sniffing. <laughs> What smells like cheese and turns out it's my slippers because I'm a scruffy bastard. Um so yeah, that was uh that's like one of my stories of the week. I'm sure there's many others that I could tell. Uh but you know, I don't think many people will care about that. I did get my hair cut today, which was quite nice. Um actually it's not quite nice. I mean whereas I like getting my hair cut, uh because like you come out feeling like a new person and brimming with confidence about your new your new do. Um it's an incredibly awkward situation for me because for 20 minutes to half an hour, I've got to pretend like my life is worth talking about to people or they will actually understand and have an interest in what I'm saying. I pretty much the main thing that I talk about is video games, movies and TV shows. And if the person I'm like, who's, like the people that cut my hair like a barber's, right, they're proper like jacked up meatheads kind of thing. And it's weird. It's like these people like, you know, you can tell that they lift quite a few bags of groceries up uh, up some stairs and don't break a sweat um so yeah it was, it was it's weird and you know they're like the kind of people that are like oh you lads 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 you know they're all banter oh and they you know go out and have have a pint and shit uh and it's just like yeah i stay inside playing video games i'm happy with that life uh you know, so it's, I'm, I'm really not good with conversation there, I just sort of like try and end it as quickly as I can, they probably don't like me, but I do give them a little bit of a tip, because they do make me feel like a princess, um, so yeah, that was, uh, that's, that's the highlight of my week, um, other news, um, would be my TF2 blog, I rebooted again, so I'm gonna be starting to do that again, um, mainly because I'm a bit bored, I've got a lot of spare time, um, and I'm just trying to sort of keep myself proactive. Um, it's mainly to sort of uh, help with my reviews because I keep on sort of putting them off and playing video games instead. Um, 
this is just to sort of get me out of the habit of just turning to video games when I'm sort of like having a sort of a, a, a bit of a off time of it because after I've sort of like recorded and edited for quite a while my sort of like head gets a bit numb and then I'll just put it off for ages and ages whereas this is just a way that I just don't keep on going back to video games and playing games I just want to do something proactive so the only time when I'll really play video games is if I'm streaming and I'm hoping I'm well try and keep it to that obviously there'll be a few other times when I fill in the gaps but I think it's mainly to um, sort of get myself up out of bed in the morning and um, actually do something instead of just going on to and straight into playing a game uh, because it's like you know when you do that all day and it's like the end of the day you, you sort of what have I done today fuck all brilliant can't wait for tomorrow what am I going to do tomorrow fuck all um, whereas this way oh hello kitty <laughs> Sorry, that's my cat. Uh, she wasn't the one that was making that noise. It was me, I'll admit. Um, other things as well. Hopefully my reviews will become a little bit more frequent. Um, although, apart from the next couple of weeks, because uh, um, my G900 that I bought, um, which was contributed mainly and halfly from Patreon people, um, is broken. It won't charge. Um, so yeah, I have to send that back. And I don't have, well, I have a printer, but I cannot be asked to get it up and working because it, it really does, t it's going to take, what, about 30, 30 minutes. And I, I literally, 30 minutes to print off one sort of delivery label, not worth it. So I'm just going to wait until I'm back at work and I'll just print it off at work and then return it that way. Um, but yeah, it's a good mouse anyway. I can't really explain much about it because one, that will spoil the reviews and two, it's been quite a few days that I've not used it now um, and it's broken. So I'm not going to review a broken product. Um, but yeah, reviews should hopefully be a little bit more frequent. There may be a chance I can get a better camera. Swell if I do because, oh my goodness, using phones is so annoying. It's, it's painful because I've got to use this really, really crappy stand that's generic for all phones and when you put a phone in it you know it doesn't really keep it secure it's you can't really set up any shots with it either and you're very limited to what you can do you can't really zoom in if you zoom in it starts looking really pixelated um like video cameras for phones are sort of designed for you to sort of like take a video of a concert or something but you know, not really using a zoom feature or anything like that, you know, you're not really sort of detailing onto one small subject, which is what I'm doing. And it's, yeah, it's, it's becoming frustrating. Um, so yeah, that will certainly make it easier. Um, I'm sure there was something else. Uh, oh yeah, the FK one plus, um, made by Zowie. So Zowie have made a new mouse. It's like the FK one, but it's slightly plus sized. So it's a little bit bigger and it is a little bit bigger. It's like, what, four, three to five millimeters bigger in some areas. So, I mean, granted, they do a good job of bringing out mice of every shape and size to sort of cater to everyone. But it's just like, come on, people just want, and it's always sort of been the same thing. They just want a mouse or a Zowie mouse with a better sensor. Well, with, the, I say better sensor, with the um, uh, three, three, 3366 sensor and on run switches and it's probably disappointed quite a few people but i don't really care anyway um so yeah um that's that little section done of uh stuff i have just hit myself in the my face with a spoon that i've left in my cup um video games um i have been playing bloodborne for about 30 minutes died i don't know how many times um and then I was like, I might have to consult a guy to help me a bit. Um, so I'm going to try that again. But it looks really good. That's why I've always seen wanting to play it. And I just thought, oh, I'll play it now. Yeah, that would be good. Um, so yeah, like, I don't know. Everybody says it was really hard. Like, there was a person. I killed him in, like, one hit. And I was like, what the hell are you on about? It's well easy. Uh, and then I just died to other people. And yeah, it's not as easy as I thought. So that was it. Um, Doom 4. That's got an open beta this weekend. I've been playing that a bit now. Um, it's okay. Um, my only sort of problem is, is that Doom for me has never been the multiplayer experience ever. 
You know, Doom is all about the single player experience and the journey around that, the gameplay a part part of that and, and things like that. And it just doesn't seem, I don't know, uh, the, the multiplayer experience is very, very generic, very, very Halo-y, um, but with added perks. There is a lot of good customization parts. And another thing that's annoying as well is that they've announced like DLC and a season pass which seems a bit shit because it's like nobody, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's multiplayer focused. Let me just have a, uh, use my uh, askjeeves.com. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, all right. Um, that game, that launched the game for your maps. That's not what I care about. I want season pass. There we go. So. Open beta launch and post launch content. Oh, eight above. Jesus Christ. I wasn't. I, I literally just want to find out about a season. Oh, and it's an American format. Why? Fucking hell. Right. Um, the first DLC will be available this summer and give you access to three new maps, one new weapon, one new playable demon, demon one new armor set, one new piece of equipment, new hack modules and taunts, new customization part, colors and pack. Patterns. Each DLC pack will cost eleven ninety nine pounds, fourteen ninety nine dollars. The season pass is either forty dollars and thirty, yeah, forty dollars or thirty pounds. Um, to me, it doesn't tell you how many bits of DLC you are going to be getting through that, and the season pass takes you to the dead link. Yep. Well, that's a little bollocks. But anyway, the 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 extra part. I don't really, I think gaming is beyond the point where you bring out new maps and you hide them behind a play wall, a paywall, sorry, because all that happens is those maps just then don't get played at all. That's all that's going to happen. You're going to add these three maps, but all the people that have bought the DLC won't really be playing them beyond maybe like the first week or two because like nobody else will, like there'll be more people and you can queue quicker on the standard maps so that is fucking stupid one new weapon i fucking hate that anyway because again it's a feature in the game behind a paywall a new playable demon fucking bollocks a new armor set which is fine because it's cosmetic piece of equipment fine cosmetic hack modules and taunts hack modules are like perks um so having a again that is fucking stupid and customization colors and patterns now it's probably because it may take too long to implement, but why they don't have, if they're going to have like customization stuff, just put them down as microtransactions. You will earn so much money. It's unreal. Look at CSGO, TF2 and Dota 2, League of Legends, um, Hero of the Storm as well. Like they're microtransactions, but they earn mad Skrilla because people will just buy stuff to make their character look cooler than somebody else that is literally it i mean csgo is literally just about making your guns look prettier than other people there is nothing else beyond that and when you sort of really break it down that way it is absolutely god awful and it's so retarded on how it works it's unreal because people actually pay real money and lots of real money bear in mind to get a gun that looks better than another one and that gun has no effect on how you play at all. And to use a really, really terrible metaphor, the proof is in the pudding. I don't know why that's even a thing. But anyway, you, you've got like a a proper good um, case subject there that shows that people will pay money for literally just cosmetic stuff. And that in its own should justify the time and effort to put in to these multiplayer games for these sort of things. And you can earn a lot of money. But no one does it. And it's like personally for me. If a game comes out and I pay full price for it. And it has microtransactions that are literally just skins. I will not care. Because those skins mean nothing. It doesn't benefit anyone at all. Like I think in uh, Doom you level up. And every time you level up you get like a random, like, random bit of gear. Like just keep that. Make it a little bit rarer. But people can still get all this weird loot stuff. And there you go. You've, you've got it. You have got what you need. And it's so sort of disappointing to see a game, a multiplayer aspect of a game. It wouldn't be anything groundbreaking. But it's literally 
doomed from the start. <laughs> um, because, you know, like, no one's going to fucking bother. Like, the, um, the only sort of, like, really good thing that makes me want to pre-order it is just the single player. I mean, that looks okay. It kind of gives me this Wolfenstein kind of feel. Like the the new the remake um, Wolfenstein's where it's actually a really good first person shooter just modernized a bit so I'm kind of looking forward to that but the multiplayer it's just so generic I've got a really itchy nose uh, ah. so yeah um it's triggered me to say the least um so yeah that's that um I've played other games I've just been playing Verdun actually to be honest. Um, I made some people incredibly mad today because they were talking about how uh, Verdun is probably the best World War shooter that they've played. And I said, no, nah, I think um, Call of Duty uh, 4 was probably the best World War shooter. And they were like, well, no, it's not taking part in the World War. It's like, it kind of is. Like, there are Russians and stuff. That's a World War, surely. Uh, but yeah, they weren't really happy with that anyway. Um, next subject is CSGO. Some people don't like this, but... I like talking about CSGO because I love watching it. So fuck you. Um, there's been some roster changes, which is Makalele leaves phase. Keo joins in his place. Existence was kicked from G2. Um, so yeah, those are the main roster shuffles. Um, Existence has now made a, a new LD, LDLC team with Maniac and a few uh, people from their old LDLC teams. Um, Makalele leaving Flay, Flay, Flay's phase is probably not really a huge surprise. Um, I mean, he's been playing okay, but he's not been anything sort of outstanding and amazing. And from previous reports of what um, people in NIP were saying and um, Flusher was saying about him, he's not a good person to have in a team. Uh, who knows what that means because they didn't dwell in deeper. Um, so yeah, he's left. Kiyoshima, who got kicked from Envious, has joined. Um, they recently had to battle it out to remain in the DreamHack Malmo Masters. Um, Envious won narrowly, but they did win regardless. Um, so it was uh, quite interesting that game, but I don't think anybody really cares because um, yeah, both teams were in a slump. Both teams have had roster changes. So regardless of who won, no one's really going to be affected by it. Um, speaking of said tournament, actually I'll get onto that later, um, Existence was uh, kicked from G2, which doesn't really make sense because he was doing really, really well. Like, he was top fragging in most of their games, it was insane. Um, like, watching his games, and like, especially online, was more um, prominent, but his, like, like, performances were really, really good. He was one of the better players, and they've kicked him. And they've brought in Zip Body from um, LDLC. So, yeah, they've replaced him, which seems a bit silly because one of the really, really bad performers in that team has been Smith's. Um, Smith's. Um, like, his orping has just not been good or what you would expect or want from a top team. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting whether or not that roster sticks around, to be honest, because... Um, I don't see the acquisition of body being like a, an improvement to the team, mainly because they got rid of the person that makes them like a really, really good um, team as it is, which is Existence, who's really, really good at in-game leading. Um, and having a person such as that is valuable to any team. I mean, just look at Fallen and LG, you know? Um, what else happened? Oh, yeah, Tai Lu. So this happened yesterday Um Basically, the Malmo Masters at DreamHack are it's like a, a small, smallish tournament. It's like invites and you get um, qualifications. And basically, this team, Tai Lu, is like a Chinese team. They um, made it into the main tournament. And yesterday, they beat Luminosity Gaming, who literally just won the um, MLG Columbus Major. So they are major champions. So the best team in the world. In a best of three, and I could not believe it. Mmm, coffee. It was honestly insane for a few factors. One, the Chinese scene, they don't really have anything solid to um, improve on. Like, they're, they are getting more tournaments, but they're nothing amazing, you know? And their community and their scene is so 
closed that they don't really get much experience against huge like teams of this caliber like you know best team in the world of caliber they don't know what they're up against or what they're practicing against until they actually play them kind of thing um so it really really is something amazing like this is really 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 impressive um one of the really impressive things as well was how um the sensitivities of these players is really really high like if you ever watch them play it's very very um erratic um and quick and it's just ridiculous how they can play like that um sort of like the average sensitivity for a csgo player is around about what 30 to 40 centimeters for a 360 um that sort of like seems to be the mark that they are mainly around but these guys are sort of like on the higher end it's ridiculous they're like using 1200 dpi and stuff so it's unreal and how they're able to do so well and aim so well under that is ridiculous it's obviously just because they've gotten used to it muscle memory and all that lot but yeah it's it's really really good because most people like I feel, start off at a sensitivity like that and then they'll start lowering it and lowering it and lowering it until they find like a really comfortable spot. Um, but obviously these people have never had the need to. So yeah, it was absolutely insane. So Tai Lu made it to the main stage. They knocked out the world champions, which is absolutely mental. Um, other news as well, which was um, Optic kicked Shazam, NA scene, Lel um it seems to be in a massive shit show the na csgo team uh sorry scene bar um clg and liquid although liquid did get knocked out by um tyloo as well so it's just a bit weird how poorly they've been performing um and optic have never been good they were conquest i believe and they did really well in a tournament i kind of want to say it was like an mlg sevo tournament and they did quite well. They got a new sponsor, um, which was Optic. Um, and then they just seemed to disappear completely. Like, I can't really remember any noticeable results. Um, so, yeah, apparently they just got rid of Shazam. They they didn't like him. They were trying to get other players behind his back. Um, and apparently there was a, a time where one of the players didn't show up for a game. Um, and, they <clears throat> and they said it was because of a family emergency turns out it was actually because they were playing csgo the night before trying to uh, rank up in matchmaking or something like that um so yeah it's like for me there is too much money in the like na esports team like scene in general that it's just not helping like at all um and it's either they have to be aware or they have to sort of like understand that they're being paid this money not because they're good but because they're marketable and that is literally what it seems to be because these orgs would just pick up european teams i mean some of them are already doing that but there are still quite a few some large um na orgs that are just picking up mediocre teams and are happy with that because of the amount of exposure they get i mean look at tsm like they had a really really good danish team there was a problem with communication instead of rectifying that they just sort of like, yeah, all right, we'll, we'll part ways. And then they just took up a mediocre NA team that have done absolutely nothing, it seems, as well. I mean, just look at Cloud9. Like, they have literally just done absolutely nothing at all. And I feel if, if these teams, or like if a European team was performing the same, like a change is made. And that's obviously evident in Envious. Um, their slump they made a change phase they're in a slump they've made a change like if they are in a moment where they're not performing well they will make a change i think navi last year they were in a slump um so starix retired and they got flamey so they've made a change whereas in north america it's just like well we're in a slump well let's just carry on for a bit see what happens uh oh we're still in a slump um all right let's all right, one of us will leave, um, and then we'll replace him with, I don't know, anyone. Who's your mate? Any any of your friends want to join? That just seems to be what it is. Um, so yeah, anyway, and enough of that whinging. Um, so it's not very interesting, I'm sure. Um, so what have I got next? Um, I believe... Oh yeah, Batman versus Superman. The dawn of justice so um 
I saw like a load of um, so I saw a lot of uh, hate around this film um, which was really upsetting me um, because I do have a Batman tattoo on my arm um, hopefully this will be um, the last of the shit films because if I'm honest um, it's going to start making me feel a bit regret uh, of for, for getting this it's not really I'm it's, it's mainly be- I, I just I got it because I I love the comic book it's uh, from anyway. Um, so yeah, um, I mean I really like Batman and I didn't think it was fucking terrible. I didn't mind it like it wasn't brilliant but it wasn't shit. Um, there were a few things which was just didn't make sense. Like if anything, it was just the main story that was bad. I liked all the characters. Ban Affleck as um, Batman was brilliant. He is he is fucking ripped as fuck. He looks like a, he he. If I'm honest, he is probably one of the best Batman's. I know it's only from one film, but he really does look the part properly. He has the sort of the miserable, bored, rich man persona nailed down, and that's fantastic. He's really really good as Batman. He's ripped as shit, so he actually plays like a good sizable Batman. So yeah, in general, very, 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 very impressed with him. I mean, um, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor, I'm fine with him as well. Like, yeah, it's not exactly like the comics, but, you know, this is like the the star of his vendetta against Superman. Um, and he's going to be a bit insane, a bit weird at the start because, you know, he's all over the place. And then what's going to happen is he'll probably start being more focused on his objective, which is to get rid of Superman. And then you'll probably find that'll be a lot less extravagant. It's like, why can't people just sort of take a step back and, you know, let that soak in? I mean, I was fine with his performance. I didn't I didn't hate it. It wasn't amazing, but, you know, it it could have just sort of acted really stern and shit and it would have just been boring. It would have just been incredibly generic. Um, So he was fine. Um, Wonder Woman was fine. Um, everybody else was pretty fine to be honest there wasn't anything really wrong um, the story was the the part that was obviously bad for most people I really really do think it could have been a lot better if they just split it up into two films part one part two do like a Harry Potter and a Deathly Harrows kind of thing mainly because they you, you can clearly see that they try to fit so much story into like two and a half hours and it, there were just huge there were there were just parts where it was like huge jumps nothing was really sort of um explained like there was like no real middle ground either it was like batman is kind of pissed off at superman batman now wants to kill superman batman tries to kill superman um oh yeah spoilers by the way if you don't want any more spoilers this is the point because this is when i'm going to start spoiling it um it, it's probably worth spoiling to be honest i'll save you a bit of time um, so <clears throat> I think that's the main part which most people are pissed off at, which is Batman wants to actually kill Superman, which is his number one no-no. Like it is his main rule. The whole reason why Batman exists is because he doesn't kill people. And yet in what seems to be a space of a very, very short amount of time, he goes from, oh, this Superman guy, I don't like him. I'm going to fucking murder him, the prick. Like that was that was like a really really sort of zero to sixty kind of thing. It's like whoa, all right, mate, just take a step back for a moment. You know, you've gone. You know, he's obviously portrayed as quite old. It's like you've gone through all this, you know, career as Batman without killing anyone. Now, now you're sort of like hitting your fifties. Now you want to sort of fucking kill someone? Are you sure? Like you've gone this far? Well, I spoil it now, kind of thing. Um, and that's the part that sort of did peeve me a bit. Because it just sort of seemed incredibly... Well, it was out of character. And it, it just seems to sort of like come out of nowhere. Now, <clears throat> the whole Batman versus Superman thing could have really be handled better as well. Because it wasn't really Batman versus Superman until like the last like 45 minutes. And the rest of it was just like Batman and Superman just sort of milling about a bit. Trying to find out what Lex Luthor's doing. He seems to be a shady fella. Um, oh yeah, let's flat. And then they fight each other and uh, stuff like that. But it's based on the comic, which is The Dark Knight Returns. Now, <clears throat> this is why I think it should be split into two films. So in this one film, um, they, 
they pretty much started it um, where it left off from Man of Steel, where like the whole city's fucked up from the the fight with him and uh, Superman and General Zod. People died. People want to hold him accountable. People are a bit sort of like, yo, man, what are you all about? You sort of go around and fly and shit. You can kill everybody on this planet, but you're helping us. Um, quite a few people... Oh, he's, he sort of gets set up to make it look like he killed loads of people in a village, which I don't really understand anyway, because it's like he has literally not killed anybody ever apart from one person. Everybody else was collateral, uh, collateral damage. Um, that's not really his fault, because it's either collateral damage... Or everybody dies anyway because that's what General Zod was going to do. He was going to kill the whole fucking planet. Um, so, you know, obviously a few, maybe 100,000 people dying. You can kind of like, you know, let that slide. You know, it's not really that important um, in comparison. So everybody's like, whoa, did you kill those people in that village? And it's like he literally jumped in. Basically what happened was Lewis Lane was in this sort of uh, village doing some reporting and shit. Um, they basically found out that she was with like an undercover CIA person um, basically in another sort of different sting some gang members um, that Lex Luthor sort of had brought in to also go undercover started shooting people um, basically Superman arrived to save Lewis Lane and got out um, but for some reason they didn't really take into account that super like that these people were shot in the head and uh, Superman does not have a gun Um as far as I was aware anyway, he doesn't really need one, you know? Um, so it's a bit like I don't really understand. My cat is now currently um, nibbling on my arm. Hmm. That is a... Uh, that hurts, kitty cat. Um, anyway, so all that shit happens. Um, it seems to be quite, um, quite weird um, that people just sort of really buy into that. Um, so quickly especially as this dude has literally just saved the planet and he goes around saving other shit um, but then they sort of I mean understandably they want to sort of like control him and stuff and in the comic books that's what happens so to put this against the sort of like the comic books I mean in the film it sort of like goes from that people hate him Batman hates him because he's worried that he's just going to flip and kill everybody in the whole world despite their literally being no evidence to support that 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 will ever happen or ever has happened that is ever killed anybody at all um on purpose like just killed an innocent person all he's done so far is kill one person which was general zod everybody else was collateral damage and obviously ended up dying on the the way of saving the entire world um so batman hates him he feels like he has to destroy him because he could just flip his shit and just go mental and kill everyone. Fine. In the comics, um, they do this whole Batman vs. Superman. There is uh, the Dark Knight uh, returns. He's like old. He comes back from retirement to sort out Gotham City because it's under like loads of loads of like bad shits everywhere. Shit is hitting the fan. Shit is, up. Shit is against the wall. Um, and the government sort of like doesn't control superman but they have influence on him and they just sort of say how um you know you've got to sort of deal with this guy because he's getting a bit loose he's making us all look bad i mean yeah he's stopping crime but he's making the police and the government look bad because he's doing it more efficiently and he's not really letting us do our thing uh because he's doing it first so superman's all right i have a chat he has a chat with him so batman's all like nah man i've got this um so it, it keeps on going and basically Superman has to step in. Um, Batman knows that this is going to happen. So basically they fight. Um, and that's it. They fight and Batman defeats Superman. Doesn't kill him. And this is they could have just put this into the film. Instead of having Batman wanting to actually kill Superman. What they do in the comics they just practically make it. And Batman defeats Superman by the whole kryptonite arrow puffs into his face like superman's like all on the floor like ah, i'm weak um and batman's like you know let this be known that i can and i will defeat you get out of my way kind of thing back that shit up fam you can't messing with me bringing beef here you can be stopped so you're not all powerful you know he sort of brings him down a few levels to like let superman know that he's not 
you know, the one swinging his dick. And they could have done that in the film. They could have actually just done that. Like, Batman could have just sort of held him up against it and be like, yeah, look at that, motherfucker. I, I literally fucked your shit up. I've got you where I want you. You can die right now. Let it be known, right, that this can happen. So, call it, son. And that's it. That would be it. That's fine. It's done. You know, you, you've, you've, you've done it. And then you can go on back to the story about Lex Luthor. You can literally split this film in half. So you can have the first film that leads up to that moment where Batman and Superman fight. But Batman's like, yo fam, it's just a prank. I'm not actually going to kill you. Because, you know, uh, I'm Batman. I don't do that. You see, I've decided, you know, I'm going to keep that whole thing that I've been doing for my whole life. I'm not going to kill you at all. Um, and then the, the, the second part of the film like film number two could just be about you know them two trying to you know sort out this Lex Luthor problem obviously they'd have to extend it by a little bit and add a little bit more story to it because it'd be quite short um but what Lex Luthor is doing which is trying to bring in kryptonite and use it against um Superman and to like um create doomsday like that could have just been a separate film because the the good part with it and I think one of the kind of frustrating part is that in the film you have like these really really amazing and awesome build-ups so batman versus superman their fight should have been like a huge and amazing fight and build-up that would have been amazing and you could have just led it up to that they could have slugged it out for 10 minutes because that's pretty much what hasn't happens in the comics because batman's literally just wearing a metal suit and that's it but they could have just been slugging it out for 10 minutes and then you know it could have just ended end of film dumb and then on the second one they could have had everything you know leading up to doomsday and they could have had an amazing fight with doomsday you know 10 minutes 20 minutes of them like fucking shit up um because at that point don't forget like batman and superman are sort of like not bezzy mates but they're like understanding each other and like yo we're gonna have to make sure that we don't you know get this away from um the general public because that's what happens in um the comics as well with doomsday where they're sort of like chasing after him trying to make sure he doesn't get near civilization or a built-up area because it's gonna fucking mess everybody up and they can't evacuate in time so like trying to hold him back and shit so they could have just put that in and that would have been absolutely fan-fucking-tastic you would have been able to set up all the um the justice league you'd have been able to like appease everybody as well you'd have like a decent story and you'd also have like the climactic parks that would get enough screen time and people would feel satisfied with. But because they rushed these moments, you didn't really get to soak it in. And because you're trying to keep up with the story that's progressing so quickly, and the film's already like two and a half hours, and the amount of story they're trying to fit in between that two and a half hours is just insane anyway. Like people have been able to have enough time to process everything, they'll be able to follow the story better, they would be able to understand everything better. And ultimately, it would have been more enjoyable, but it fucking wasn't. Bollocks. Um, I could literally go on for about half hour on this, but I'm not because oh, my throat's getting dry. Um, so that's the end of that run. Um, final thing, I guess, most people probably won't care about, but this is like my passion in life, which is there's a new phone, which is um, um, the HTC 10, um, which is going to be fucking brilliant, hopefully. Um to give you a bit of a backstory, HTC have been really, really struggling recently. Um, like, they've been making okay phones, but they've all had one critical flaw, um, which has sort of been making people quite upset, um, which haven't, you know, sort of really um, done well for customer loyalty either. Um, so it's the HTC 10. Basically, they started really, really getting good when they made the first HTC One. Um, which was like a really, really well-designed phone, um, good stereo front-facing speakers, shit camera, um, but like a good um, user interface um, and a good design. But yeah, the camera was bollocks. Like, there was loads of problems where it'd leave a purple tint on um, the camera and it was just shocking. But the rest of it was good. It, you know, had a good standard and people enjoyed it. It was just a disappointing camera. Um, they then bought out the HTC One M8, which was a very, very good phone. Like, people were really, really pumped for it because it sort of improved on what was wrong with the previous version. It still had a shit camera, though, but everything else was, like, really, really up to standard and was, in total, like, a really good phone. So, after that, 
there was obviously the uh, one afterwards, which was the HTC One M9. Um, first of all, people are getting pretty fucking pissed off the fact that all their phones seem to be called HTC One, which confused the shit out of everybody. And people are like, mm, come on now. Um, they finally decided to get rid of um, the shit ultra pixel camera and they put like a decent ish camera in it. But the processor that they had in it, to not bore you with the details, um, there was a problem with it overheating. Um, and that pretty much plagued the phone, which is unfortunate because it's not shit. It's not a terrible phone, but considering the others that were offered and available, um, to put it in an example, there's only, I think, from like main UK based flagships, the Samsung S6 completely skipped that processor that was available because of the overheating options. LG in their LG G4 completely skipped the same processor because of the overheating problems. Um, the only one that didn't skip it is Sony, but they implemented liquid cooling into their um, phone so it doesn't overheat. And I had one and it never overheated, but the HTC M9 was pretty much fucked because of that. Um, now the other problem is that the design never really changed. It was never really improved upon on what was problems with the previous versions. Um, everybody hated the god awful um, black bar at the very bottom, which was a HTC, just like a black bar with HTC written on it. And everybody was like, why not just make these into like capata? I can't pronounce it. I can never pronounce it. Capacitive, capacitive, cap capacitive capacitive button i think that's right um so that basically means that at the bottom you obviously have um proper home screen buttons home back and uh multitasker and it was such a waste of space now in this one they've got rid of that ugly fucking black bar htc logo they've actually got um physical buttons at the bottom as well it's got a good camera apparently it's still ultra pixel but it shouldn't be shit ultra pixel and from reviews it's a good ultra pixel it's got a big battery loads of ram really nice screen um it's got usb 3.0 wireless charging i think I, I can't remember i could have sworn i know it's got fast charging but i can't remember if it i think it has got wireless charging but i'm not 100 percent sure on that because obviously yeah let's just assume it's got wireless charging if it has i'm very erect because I've got a wireless charger. Anyway, um, so yeah, everything about it seems absolutely fantastic. And you just sort of sit in there and just like, if, I hope they don't fuck this up. Because basically, the only reason why like, most people are excited about when a phone isn't shit is because it basically just means that everybody else has to step up that game. Um, I mean, look at Apple. They've made some incredible phones. They've made some really, really well-designed, amazing phones. And there's a point when they start slacking a bit. But then, for example, Samsung actually start making a really good phone like the S6 and the S7. And it's good because it means that everybody else is going to up their game. So HTC have sort of started to up their game. LG kind of have. Um, I might do a review of the LG G5 because I've got one. Um, so yeah, I might actually do that. Um, so yeah, basically, when something good hits, it forces everybody else to sort of really, really improve. And at the end of the day, it's only good for like general people because you're spoiled for choice. You know, anything that you get is going to be quality. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's why my pickle is well and truly tickled. Um, I think that's all I've got now. 50 minutes! Actually, if I get rid of all the, the dead silence, it may not be 50 minutes, but Jesus Christ. I bet this is mainly because of the Batman stuff because that really does make me talk out my arsehole. <sighs> And on that audacious yawn, um, I think we're done. Um, don't forget to go on my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash warherier and my website, warherier.gg. Oh, Jesus, I'm a bit tired. I'm going to play some uh, Doom. Um, goodbye, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this edition. Um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and all that bollocks. Peace.